Indiana is born. Um, so a bit of background, um, hopefully most of you will remember this. Um, in March 2010, uh, the binary releases of Open Solaris stalled. So um, every couple of weeks, uh, Sun were releasing a new build which people could download. Um, they stopped, and that was due to the forthcoming release of uh, Open Solaris um, 2010-1H, meaning hopefully coming out in the first half of 2010. Um, the source code after this was still being made available. Um, Sun and Oracle developed op most of Open Solaris in the open with publicly available source code repos, so people could still get the source. However, the first half of 2010 came and went, and there was still no sign of the new Open Solaris as we've been promised. Um, so some of us started to get a bit worried about this. Um, we wanted the latest features which were in the source code but weren't available to install in binary form. Um, so I hosted an Open Solaris hackathon in London um, back in July and uh, quite, quite a few people turned up and it became evident that we could actually build the source. Um, I don't think anyone outside of Sun had really put the whole Open Solaris distribution uh, together themselves. Other people had built their own distributions, but no one had built Open Solaris that you could actually install and, and look just like the one that Sun was releasing. So we decided to, to do that, and the work began. And uh, one month later, it turned out that this was quite, um, it, it was quite good that we decided to do this because uh, the leaked memo came out confirming that uh, Open Solaris was indeed dead. Um, Lumos had launched on the uh, August of 3rd, and then on August 16th, Oracle decided to stop providing access to the source code for the kernel and core user land for, um, for Open Solaris. They were still making available um, all the user land on top, which I'll get into in a bit, so that was still available, but essentially the crown jewels, um, the kernel where ZFS lives, uh, was no longer available in source form. So this became quite a serious situation to a lot of people, for a lot of people. And in the following month, uh, we released Open Indiana, and um, several months of hard community uh, work um, came to fruition. Uh, came out on September the 14th, and people were able to download it and install it. So what is Open Indiana? Uh, well, it's effectively a, a spark of Open Solaris. Um, it's not completely a fork because we're still building the, the source. Um, so it's more of a spark because some of the source we're building and other bits are coming from somewhere else. And it was uh, the register who actually called us a spork. Uh, it's quite a clever name, really. Um, open Indiana is open source software, uh, which is quite important, and I'll uh, get onto that in a bit. Uh, and our ultimate aim is to become the de facto open Solaris distribution installed on production servers where security and bug fixes are provided free of charge. Um, and that's quite important because uh, a lot of users out there who use Linux, uh, they're just used to typing yum update or apt-get update and they get free updates, free security updates. And in order for any Unix operating system to compete with that, uh, they have to provide it as well. But most importantly, Open Indiana is also a community, and we're not being, it's not being developed by a business. It's being developed by uh, individuals like myself and people in the audience here, and people from all around the globe. And uh, we're having a lot of fun doing it at the same time. So how does it compare to uh, Oracle's official Solaris 11 Express? Uh, well, in theory, it's a drop-in replacement. Um, it's not identical. Uh, there are differences. Oracle have access to the very latest uh, source code for the kernel, so we're going to be missing features. Um, but ultimately, the most important thing is that it's open source and it's free to use. And why is Open Indiana important? Well, Solaris 11 Express is now its commercial <coughs> operating system. Um, before, under Sun's stewardship, Open Solaris was an open source operating system, primarily. Um, so things have kind of changed, and Solaris 11 Express is only really free for test and development. Um, and it's kind of a, when the kernel source code isn't available, it's kind of a closed source operating system. 
you can download the source, modify it, compile it, um, run through it to see how it works. Uh, and you can therefore modify it. So why is open source important? Well, it's about transparency, freedom, and choice, um, which are things that I believe very strongly in. Effectively, it's the software industry versus the software community uh, and the software society. And uh, open source, I really believe, has powered the internet revolution that uh, we've all seen. Um, if people had charged for uh, the first web browsers, if people had charged for uh, the first web servers, sure, people would have paid for it, and people did in a way, uh, you know, in the early days. But um, open source has just accelerated everything, and technologies like ZFS have accelerated uh, the storage market. Um, before, storage was very expensive to do, and technologies like ZFS and cheap hard drives have just revolutionised. Um, pe how people store data now people are just storing so much more data so open source really has the power to, to, to accelerate innovation and it lets people share ideas so it is something that, that I believe very strongly in and it also gives you self-determinism so it gives people the control um, over what, what's happening you know they, they have the source code so in effect um, Solaris has kind of become a commercial Unix aimed at enterprise um, that makes sense for Oracle to do that because it's uh, where they're going to make the most money. Enterprise need the most reliable Unix operating system out there. But in a way, to the rest of the market, the people who aren't working for big enterprises and are used to not paying for their Unix operating system, um, to them Solaris kind of seems a bit legacy <coughs> or a bit proprietary and perhaps even obsolete. And I get this on a daily basis when I tell people to use Solaris. They say, well, isn't it dead yet? And it just seems in the rest of the world outside of enterprise that Solaris is becoming more and more um, obscure. But obviously in the enterprise, I think Oracle have made the right decisions. Um, Adrian uh, Cockroft, who currently works at Netflix, uh, he was a former technical lead for the performance engineering group at Sun Microsystems, so you know, he is pretty familiar with Solaris. He said he predicts that Illumos will be just as irrelevant as Solaris has been for the last few years. Legacy. And this is a message that a lot of people have been kind of coming out with. And this is why Open Indiana is important. And most importantly, it's why your contribution to things like Open Indiana matters. Uh, really, it's our last opportunity to save Solaris from obscurity. Uh, we won't let Solaris fade into the night, not without fights. Um, I don't want to start using Linux uh, for my business. It's not economically viable under my business model uh, to use Solaris, and the alternative is Linux. And, you know, Linux doesn't have ZFS, it doesn't have SMF, it doesn't have zones. Uh, these are really cool features. So, you know, we want Solaris to survive. So a lot of people are thinking, you know, doesn't Open Indiana compete with Oracle Solaris? And I really don't think so. Um, the two products are quite complementary. Oracle Solaris is aimed at the enterprise. Um, they want people to pay for it. Uh, they're going to be providing a very high level of service. They're doing combined hardware software support contracts. And it makes sense for a lot of people who need that uh, to go and pay for it. And that's perhaps something that Sun was failing to, to capitalize on and, and monetize. So I think Oracle have, in a way, done the right thing. Um, but Open Indiana really aims at the Linux end of the market. And you're talking about a market where people just point blank refuse to pay for software. Um, they don't want to pay. And what's their alternative? Well, without Open Indiana, it's just Linux and FreeBSD, really, and the other BSD operating systems. <coughs> so, uh, the second bit is about Illumos. So what's Illumos? Well, I mentioned that um, Oracle have closed OSNet, which is the, the kernel, the core bit where all the good stuff is. Um, so without Oracle maintaining that, where is Open Indiana going to get its kernel from? Um, and the answer is Illumos. And it was created by Garrett Demore. He's an Exxon kernel engineer. <coughs> As I mentioned, it's no longer available from Oracle. So when the community wants to get hold of the latest uh, source code to something that looks like OSNet, they go to Illumos. Uh, 